Warning, this video contains spoilers for a side mission in Disco Elysium. Viewer discretion is advised. Disco Elysium is a dark game. The main story revolves around a lynched man whose body was left on a tree for days. Drugs are everywhere and are ravaging an already run down community. Corruption is rampant and everyone you meet seems to have some sort of issue. You play as a cop who was so whacked out on drugs he completely lost his memory and his own partner wasn't even surprised. And yet despite that, I was able to find little joys in the different interactions with these broken characters. I was able to keep my head up in a world which seemed to relentlessly beat down anyone who lived in it. That is, until I found myself in this tiny apartment. And final warning, I'm about to spoil one of the side missions of Disco Elysium, so if you want to experience it for yourself, go play it and then come back to this video. So if you watched my review of Disco Elysium, you might recall me bringing up how the game did a great job with the concept of Chekhov's gun. For those who don't know, Chekhov's gun is this idea in writing where every element of a story should contribute to the whole. The most famous example is of course this quote from Chekhov. If in Act 1 you have a pistol hanging on the wall, then it must fire in the last act. And while Chekhov's gun doesn't necessarily mean that every single detail has to matter, it does mean that it should contribute to the overall feel or parts of the story. And I do think that Chekhov's gun is an important concept in any storytelling medium, as it really helps to trim the fat of story, helps to build foreshadowing, and also helps to make stories feel more satisfying. I think that by examining how different elements end up tying out, you're able to identify who are some of the special storytellers out there, and I think many great books, movies, and even TV shows implement this idea into their writing. So the moment I want to show you today is an example of how Disco Elysium utilizes the idea of Chekhov's gun. In Disco Elysium, you play as a cop who's completely lost his memory. You meet your partner Kim, and after examining the body of the lynched man who's the center of your main case, you then become free to explore the world. One of the places you can visit is the bookstore, where you find a somewhat neurotic owner who makes her daughter stand out in the cold in order to get visitors to come in. On the second day, when you come back to revisit the bookstore, you find another woman standing outside. She's browsing books and humming to herself. She then introduces herself as No one. I'm just a working class woman. And the game titles her as such as well. Your logic then kicks in saying If she's such a working class woman, why isn't she working? If you decide to keep talking to her, you can introduce yourself as a policeman, and this then gives you the option to ask if she needs help from a policeman, which results in her giving a confused response. Then it gives you the option, maybe your husband's missing? A bit of an odd dialogue choice at this point in the game. My husband? No, he's not. So where could he be? I don't know. At home now? Out drinking with his friends? Working? Your partner is even confused by this line of questioning and asks, Where is this going, officer? You're given some choices, including, so what I'm hearing is you don't really know where your husband is. And honestly, in my initial playthrough of the game, even I was feeling like, where is this going? Is she maybe the wife of the lynched man? And as a result, I actually ended up dropping this conversation. I later went back to replay this section and found that you can continue to harass the woman, even asking about her daughters and cockatoo. If you keep going, your logic even kicks in and says, Okay, it must be asked then. What are you doing here? Why are you pursuing this? Is it a hunch? Eventually, you finish talking to the woman. Then, by the third day, you find yourself able to visit the fishing village across the water. As you explore the land, you eventually find the pier. As you approach, your perception suddenly strikes you. The smell. It's awful and familiar. Don't you recognize it? That hideous pungency. That faintly cloying sweetness. Only death smells like that. You see up ahead a body laid against the bench. Your character notes the floorboards of the pier look rotten and weak. You then approach the body. You and Kim investigate, and you note that it appears to have been a potentially drunken accident. Based on your autopsy, you figure that the pier gave way under the man who then hit his head on the bench and bled out and died. On his body, you find a library card. Now, based on my discussion of Chekhov's gun and the scene before that I built up, you probably already know where this is going. But for me personally, when I was playing through the game, I never had any sort of inkling that the two were connected in any way. Heck, to be honest, I had completely forgotten about the working class woman at this point, and thought it was interesting, but also a bit odd how they decided to bring in another dead man into the fold. You can then bring this library card back to Kim's car where you're able to radio the library to figure out some more details about the dead man. Yes, this is Central Jamrock Public Library here. How can I help you, officer? You begin to interrogate the librarians to see if you can figure out who this man is. You're able to obtain a name, Billy Majan, identify the home address, and that Billy's husband had returned a book while also asking for a new sci-fi book which had just come out. With those details, you can then visit the apartment which the librarian provided to you. Before you enter, Kim gives you a quick prep, 
you're about to deliver some bad news. Just don't say that you know how they feel. You don't. Good advice. You knock on the door. Is this Billy Majon's home? This is the police. Please open the door. She's surprised that the police are here, but she unlocks a door and you enter. And as you enter, there you see her, the working class woman, sitting on the bed. And that moment hit me like a bag of bricks. This poor woman who was out looking for a new book to read. This poor woman who you potentially could have harassed about not knowing where her husband was. My god. And now you need to deliver some of the worst news possible. She recognizes you. It's you from the book stand. I don't think I introduced myself properly. I'm Billy. Would you like something to drink? Tea? Lemonade? We're out of coffee. Thanks, but I'm alright. You delve into some small talk before breaking the news, asking how she's been, asking about her family. The entire time she's anxious, and I couldn't help but dread proceeding with this conversation. There's something else I have to tell you. She folds her hands across her chest. Here it comes. And there it is. The empathy check. You've done this before. Just keep your focus. Ma'am, I'm very sorry to say, but your husband, Victor Mijan, was found dead on the Martinez boardwalk. What did you say? A great and terrible spike. The blood freezes in her veins. Your husband, Victor Mijan, is dead. I'm very sorry for your loss, ma'am. Oh. Oh. But he was just... But he was just here. Alive. We understand this comes as a huge shock. I want you to know that me and my partner are here for you if you have any questions. Take your time, ma'am. What happened to him? It's still early to say, but at first glance, it seems like he slipped and hit his head. Was he drunk? Alcohol may have played a role, yes. I see. And you just found him there, lying in the cold. How long had he been there? If you say two days, maybe, it will be etched in her mind forever. It's hard to say at this point. She blinks, eyes welling up with tears as her hand starts searching for something from the pockets of her dress. Here, take this. Yes, thank you. Is there anyone we could call for you? A friend, a family member, someone who could be here for you? No, no. I just need to tell my girls. It burns like acid. God, should I call them? Should I tell them to come home? No. A day. No. Take a day to recover. You'll be better prepared when they come home tomorrow. Good. That's probably the right thing. Thank you. Just tell me, what do I need to do next? Where is he? Can I see him? We've taken him to the city morgue. The local coroner will be contacting you shortly to arrange the funeral. Here's his number in case you want to contact him earlier. Is there anything else that the RCM could do for you? No, I'll call you if something comes up. I'm still... Thank you. Thank you for telling me. I'll call if... These are her last reserves of strength. Her muscles will give in soon. Already, she starts to shake. Again, I'm very sorry, ma'am. We should step outside and talk. You step outside with Kim, and he assures you that you handled it the best way possible. What now? I'll call the station when we're finished with the day, and let them know the name of the deceased. What about Billy and her kids? They'll manage. They have to. It's not your place to live their lives. That's it? That's it. We should get back to our case now that our duty here is done. Let's go. And just like that, life goes on. And that was the moment Disco Elysium broke me. For me, it was one of the most human moments of the game, and one of the ones that I actually had difficulty getting through. First, as the realization hit me, and all the pieces and previous interactions came together, it just blew me away. Then, there's the actual act of having to tell this poor woman about what had happened. 
It actually hurt me to do and made me think about how difficult it must be to be a cop who has to deliver news like this to people on the regular. It could really break someone down. I think this moment was one which really made me appreciate just how great the game is and how brilliant the writing was. As bizarre as it is, I couldn't help but feel sympathy for this poor woman, even though she didn't even really exist. And I think that just goes to show how crazy and impactful storytelling really is for us. And as usual, this was James, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Peace.